Greetings everyone. Today I'll be introducing IBSEC Client by Cody Lime, an application that helps facilitate the creation and management of IPSEC connections on your Catalyst 9000 series switches that have application hosting capabilities for secure campus connectivity. My name is Aishwarya Sudeep. I'm a technical marketing engineer here at the Catalyst 9000 switching platform BU at Cisco. Before we get into the nuts and bolts of IPSEC Client by Cody Lime, Let's pause for a minute and understand why do we really need this application? Which leads up to the main question, why is IPSEC really needed? Why is it so important in today's networking ecosystem? In today's interconnected world, the colossal amount of data being transferred between business networks around the globe is unimaginable. Now, with all of this data coursing through the veins of a network, the last thing you want is someone snooping into your confidential data. Hence, the requirement of setting up a secure connection where data confidentiality, integrity, and authenticity is exactly what's needed. And that's what Internet Protocol Security does. IPsec, the acronym best used, is a protocol that encrypts sensitive information to prevent unwanted monitoring across the public internet and authenticates data quickly if the data originates from an unknown center. Organizations use IPsec to protect against replay attacks, or man-in-the-middle attacks thanks to its mature protocol suite that supports a range of encryption and hashing algorithms and is highly scalable. Now, having this capability in your switch to go ahead and have the secure connectivity to any remote site anywhere gives you this perfect infrastructure for a lean branch deployment. Sounds promising. With that, in this video, we will be focusing on understanding the CodyLime application called IPsec Client, the features support by this application, the architecture, the configuration steps to get the application running, and a quick demonstration to show the same. So here's introducing you to IPsec Client by Cody Lime, an IPsec VPN application that's hosted on our Catalyst 9K platform running in a Docker container. So starting from Cisco IOS XE 17.10, Catalyst 9300 and 9300 L switches, that support app hosting capabilities, but don't support native IPsec, can go ahead and leverage this application to build a software-based IPsec encrypted tunnel to any remote site. Once installed and running, the application also provides an interactive user-friendly web UI to help configure and manage the IPsec tunnel settings to really avoid all that complex IPsec CLI configurations. Now that we know what IPsec Client application by Cody Lime is all about, the next step is to get a hold of this application image, which is available in Cisco DevNet. So please do go ahead, download, upload, and get things running. Now, let's get down to the details. The IPsec Client application supports several features that have been bucketized here. Firstly, with respect to security, it implements the Ike version 2 key exchange protocol to establish IPsec tunnels. For encryption, it supports various crypto algorithms and Diffie-Hellman groups. And to really help facilitate them, it uses a third-party IPsec implementation called StrongSwan. For authentication, it supports pre-shared key or X509 to upload certificates used during authentication phase. Moving on to the supported protocols, Firstly, the application can be managed by VRFs in the software backend, and for each VRF, it can support multiple endpoints. Secondly, it supports NAT for outgoing traffic, as well as NAT traversal via UDP encryption. With respect to routing protocol support, BGP over IPsec tunnels to exchange routes with remote peer, as well as OSPF over local interfaces to redistribute networks are all supported. And to help implement these sessions, it uses a third-party networking routing suite called as FR Routing. Coming to achieving automation, you can go ahead and use YANG models with REST APIs. Finally, the application gives you the ability to build an IPsec tunnel to multiple cloud platforms and SIG providers. Along with that, there is an added bonus of establishing site-to-site -site IPsec tunnels where you can build a tunnel from your IPsec client application running on the switch to a branch router like a Catalyst 8K, ISR, or an ASR 1K, to name a few, or to a switch itself like a Catalyst X series switch, like a 9300X, a 9400X, and a 9500X that support native IPsec, or to a Catalyst 9300 or a 9300L running the same IPsec client application. To understand how IPsec client by Cody Lime functions, 
Let's go ahead and walk through the architectural design and connectivity. As mentioned in the previous slide, the application resides in a switch Docker container that basically includes everything needed to run the application. Now, as this application is specifically supported in our Catalyst 9300 series switches, it contains an app gig Ethernet interface, which is an internal hardware data port that is dedicated for application traffic. And then we have the virtual network interface card inside the container, which consists of three virtual interfaces. Each zero, this is a virtual interface where all the VLANs from the local network terminate. Then we have the ETH1, where your IPsec tunnel starts from. Lastly, we have ETH2, which is the management interface that explicitly goes through the gigabit Ethernet 0 slash 0 interface to manage the application. Now, how does this happen? So the application has a small web server which spins up a user-friendly web UI that is accessed via ETH2, where all the IPsec configuration settings are done. Before we go ahead with the demo, let's first go over the setup's topology as well as the configuration that needs to be pushed onto the switch to spin up the application. Here we have a 9300 series switch highlighted in blue, which is hosting the IPsec client by CodyLime application. We then have a user connected to the switch via VLAN 135. The intent here is to build an IPsec tunnel from the switch to Cisco umbrella to provide the user with internet connectivity. To achieve this, the first step is to spin up the application. And for that, there's few lines of configuration that needs to be pushed. Let's go over it. Firstly, we need to configure the application ID. Here we have configured it as IPsec client. Then we need to specify app gigabit ethernet interface to be used as a trunk port. And under that, interface zero will be ETH0 in the application. Next, we configure our ETH0 that's connected to our app gigabit ethernet interface with MAC forwarding. Coming to ETH1, for our demo setup, we have configured VLAN2 that's mapped to interface 1, which is ETH1 inside the application, and then assign a static IP. We will be using this IP to access the application's web UI in our demo, but as stated previously, you can use the management interface, which is ETH2, to access and manage your web UI. The next line specifies the default management gateway for apps interface 1. This is basically the IP assigned that's going to be helping ETH1 reach out to the internet. Lastly, the Docker resources are listed. And just to make it more specific, we have also specified the DNS server IP. Just to reiterate, the goal of the demo is to leverage the software-based IPsec capability offered to the 9300 series switches by the IPsec client application to provision an IPsec tunnel to Cisco Umbrella and provide internet connectivity to the user connected to the switch here on 9300L. Firstly, I have RDP'd into the Windows client machine. Now to check the user's connectivity, I'm going to click on the YouTube URL bookmarked, where it shows the user connected to the 9300L doesn't have internet connectivity. Moving on to the switch CLI, here we have all the config that needs to be configured to bring up the application that we just discussed in detail. First, we're going to go ahead and activate the application by entering the command app hosting activate app ID IPsec client. Here it shows that the current state is activated. Next, we are going to go ahead and start the application by entering the command app hosting start app ID IPsec client. To verify, I'm going to enter the command show app hosting list where it shows that the app is successfully running. Now, by entering the command show app hosting detail, we can see the memory as well as the CPU utilization by the application. Moving to network interface details, here we have ETH0 and ETH1 details. And based on the initial configuration, we had given a static IP that is 128, 107, 251, 120 to interface 1, which is our ETH1 inside the application. Next, we are going to make use of this IP to access the IPsec client application's web UI to go ahead and configure the IPsec parameters in our setup's jump host. It will then prompt us for our login credentials to really access the web UI. This is the default view of the web UI. The first step is to add and configure a new software VRF. Here, the application basically creates a VRF inside the Docker along with the VLANs that terminate in the VRF. Under VRF details, we will first provide a name. Here, we're going to name it as umbrella underscore tunnel, as we're going to go ahead and build an IPsec tunnel to Cisco umbrella. Then for phase one, 
For our encryption standard, we're going to be choosing AES-128, our hash algorithm as SHA-256, and our Ike Diffie-Hellman group as mod P2048. Then for phase two, for our encryption standard, we're going to be choosing AES-128, our hash algorithm as SHA-256, and our Ike Diffie-Hellman group as mod P2048. Next, we're going to go ahead and configure VLAN 135, the VLAN which the client device is connected to, and thereby specify the IP. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and activate this VRF and thereby save changes. Let's now move on to the endpoints section. Firstly, we will be entering the remote IP, which is 146.112.66.8, which is the Umbrella Santa Clara DC IP. And then we're going to be entering the tunnel local IP, which is going to be our ETH1 interface IP. Next, we're going to be leaving our tunnel pure IP empty. Now for time constraints, we have already gone ahead and configured our IPsec tunnel settings on our umbrella portal. And there we have gone ahead and chosen PSK and kind of created a passphrase, which we're going to be entering here. In the umbrella portal, we will be receiving a tunnel ID and the tunnel ID is going to be entered into the advanced settings configuration. Once that's done, we're going to go ahead and add this endpoint. Once the config gets pushed, we can then navigate to the visualization section where it shows that the IPsec tunnel to Umbrella has been successfully created. Let's now navigate back to our client device and refresh the web browser. As you can see, now the client device can successfully access YouTube. That's it from the demo. Now, throughout this video, I have spoken about software-based IPsec tunnel establishment where we've used IPsec client application by Cody Lime to establish the same. But for scenarios where you want a hardware-based encrypted IPsec, our Catalyst 9K series also have native IPsec support, where we support up to 100 gig of hardware-based encryption on our 9300X and 9400X, and up to 400 gigs of throughput on our 9500X. Along with that, we have a list of software features to complement the hardware. Coming to IPsec capabilities, we support tunnel mode, encapsulation as ESP, and open standard IQ2. This concludes my session. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for watching. Please do like and subscribe to our YouTube channel.